Vaidya ji, have you ever been in love? Have I ever been in love? Yes, I've been in love uh, many, many times. I'm in love every day. I'm in love every minute. The point is not who you are in love with or what you are in love with. It is the absolute experience of love. And if you cannot feel that love in every little thing you do, then you're truly not in love with one person. Because being in love with one person is a very limiting concept. Um, immediately do not allow your mind to go all over the place and I don't encourage free love like the 1960s. When, what I'm trying to say is that when you're in love with one person, you're limiting your emotions to one person. But if you feel love, the intensity of love you feel with that one person will be in its most heightened capacity. See, I've always been asked, you know, how come there is not a significant other? When the entire universe is your significant other, the restriction of one person doesn't come into play. The whole idea is you can be in love with someone special as long as you believe that that special person is also part of your absolute reality. The universality of love is way more important than the emotion of love. When you feel that oneness between you and the universe, everything that you touch, feel, act, react with is love. You become an embodiment of love. You become a vehicle and a transportation factor in this beautiful collaboration called love. Love is very sensitive. It is very special. And I've been in love with some very great men and I still am in love with them. Um, Jalauddin Rumi, I've never seen him, but I'm in love with his words. And when I think of Khalil Gibran, I can spend sleepless nights. Similarly with art, many of the uh, grand masters that I look up to, um, you know, from the Indian subcontinent all the way to Europe, the Renaissance masters and pieces of music. Bach does something to me, so does Beethoven. We've never known each other on this terra firma, but that is love. The whole idea of what inspires and culminates in a raised level of consciousness in an individual, that is love. How do we define and restrict this beautiful emotion to one sentence, or maybe to a life sentence, <laughs> or uh, maybe in the concept of restricting it to one holiday for the celebration of love in honor of Saint Valentine, I do not know. Because every moment is love. Every speck of imagination. Words are very beautiful. Yesterday something so lovely happened to me. I met this woman for the first time and uh, we spoke for a little bit and then she paused and she said, you know, you are made up of stardust. And that was such a beautiful compliment. It's somebody that I had never met. And to me that is love, you know. Somebody who had lovingly prepared a meal for me. The love transcended the taste. That is love. Love is when you are sitting by yourself and you're not feeling lonely, but you're feeling the bliss of solitude. There cannot be a love greater than that. The type of love that you feel with strangers that you might have not really met or exchanged words, but there is a hmm, a feeling of completion. That is love. If you can feel it in a dewdrop on a blade of grass in the morning, and can feel it before you last close your eyes at night, either consciously or unconsciously, tired or you're not, that still is love. The dreams that you dream are love. The actions that you do are love. Sometimes the pauses you make, the stresses you fake, and 
the dance that you have inside your heart, that is love. If all this is love, then I truly am in it. And what can I say? I don't think I will ever be a prisoner of love because I think of love as freedom. You know, um, when I was a little girl, in the very romantic sense of love, there was um, a little card or, you know, I don't remember now, I think it was a little poster. It had a big butterfly on it and I remember the words. It said, when you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours and if it doesn't, it never was. The problem is, as human beings, whether the object of your affection is a person or a thing, we think that if we hold on to it, the love is more intense. Unfortunately, it isn't that way. When you allow your object of your affection to be free, that is the most beautiful expression of your love. And when they have that freedom, in that freedom they will celebrate you more. And truly, in my opinion, true love stories never have an ending. And that should be the case. Don't restrict your emotion of love into one thing. You know, don't say, oh, I love him so much. How much does he love me back? Or I love her so much. I'm not sure whether he, you know, she loves me back that much. You can't quantify love because love is a, is a concept that nobody knows. You don't know how to quantify it. It can't be weighed in a scale nor can it be put into a Ziploc bag. I hope the whole world can be put into a Ziploc bag. It's so convenient. But I still think love is not one of those things. See, love is, can be in a little blueberry. It can also be in pasta in a never-ending bowl. You know, both are love. It depends on who is eating and depends on what they want to eat and what their taste preferences are. So don't restrict the concept of love into one little thing because that itself is disregarding the expanse of what love truly is. Love is bountiful, it's magical, it is a, it is a story, a real story, a story that takes you through the ravages of time and through um, hills and vales and it takes you through little antiquities and emotions that you possibly don't understand today. You probably never will understand. But even if you breathe your last not knowing love in its entirety, you will still be in it. And I think I'm in it. I'm in it every moment, every step of the way. And love is too big, too beautiful to not share it. There you go. <laughs>